Welcome to Maripo the James Bill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. And welcome back to Project 58. Man, I've got a lot of work to do. Right, I've got to sort out solar panels in a sec, but before I do that, here we go. The Vetus is back in and she's all been connected up. So let me show you what's been done. Uh, the exhaust has been connected up there. Uh, skin tanks, we've got the return and flow on the port and the starboard skin tank. Uh, we've got the Morse controls, which are here. So we've got the uh, throttle and gear linkage. They've come through, so the gear linkage is down there. There we go, forwards, reverse, neutral. And then the throttle cable comes through there and underneath the air intake. So yeah, engine's all back in. Obviously it's not wired up, but the wires that are connected are these two connections down there, uh, which make their way through those holes there and into the Vetus instrument panel. So that might be working. Anything I do need to do is do a little bit of re-tidying up in there, hoover it out, might slap a bit more bilge paint down on those braces, but that's it. Engine's back in, all connected up, apart from the starter battery that is, which I'll get round to doing this week. Jobs are good and Right, I'm going about demounting this solar panel because I'm gonna to need to attach a solar cable to that and bring it inside the boat. Right, the clock is seriously ticking for me. I've got to get the boat from the hard standing where it currently is via a crane onto the canal a few hundred yards that way uh, in about a week's time. And when I'm over there, that's it, no power. So the Vetus, obviously when I'm over on the canal, I'll have to move the boat a little bit. So the Vetus will have a starter battery put to it so I can start the engine, move the boat up and down. But in terms of powering on board, I've got nothing. Obviously I haven't got a leisure bank of batteries yet because I don't know what I'm doing with that. So to power everything I need in order to build the boat, um, I've got nothing. What I do have though is the sun. So we are lucky enough in the summer here in Britain to have some solar. Actually, it is pretty good at the moment. So um, that's the only thing I'm gonna have. I've got no alternator on the engine to charge other batteries. I can't charge um, anything any other way. All I've got is solar. So what I need is a big capacity battery pack in order to keep feeding the solar and for me to use that in order to power everything I need to build this boat. And Tech Giant's anchor believe that their new powerhouse 767 is going to fit the bill for me. And this is it. It's got a massive 2,000 watt hours of power. Actually, it's got more than that. Um, and what I'm going to need is something that I can just basically keep charged through the solar. And so I can get some solar panels on the roof of this, um, keep it charged basically throughout, and then use all the power harnessed in this to power everything I need on the boat. In terms of what it can do, it's got three AC outputs, which can um, output a massive 2.3 kilowatts, which is absolutely huge. I've got a uh, sweary Dan to come around and do some of the welding on the roof. And we're gonna see if this is gonna be able to power that, and it should be able to. The other thing I really like about it is that it's got two 12 volt uh, cigarette outputs. Most of one other ones I've seen have only got one. It's also got uh, two USB A's um, and USB C's. So it's got kind of all the outputs that you need, but the most important thing by a country mile is what it can, you know, it's the overall capacity of it. As I said, two, over 2000 watt hours is, is kind of in one unit is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's got the mobile phone app, so you can kind of keep tabs, keep tabs on it all and work out how much you've got and everything. But, the display shows it all, so I'm at 52% now. So I've been, if I show you around, it weighs quite a bit, but it's gonna do. Um, around the back here, it's got a couple of inputs here. So uh, yeah, you put, put it the, obviously through the um, 240 mains goes in there, but I'm not gonna be able to do that in its position here at all. So I'm gonna be using this, which is the, uh, one of those XT20 connections. 
So uh, it came with a whole load of connections. So for solar, you can plug it straight into there. And obviously for a car, cigarette lights, you can plug it straight into there. These ones here from Anchor aren't really designed to be moved around that much. And it's also got a uh, an additional port here. So if you can, buy, you can buy a second battery, a booster battery for this and hook it up that way. And then obviously you get loads more capacity. It does have a towing handle to make it kind of easy to maneuver. So, and that really does kind of move it around the boat and stuff, makes it a bit easier. But really, I can imagine for me, this is just gonna be put in a kind of static position here on the boat, and I'll just be able to kind of use all the power I need from it. I'm just going about disconnecting these MC4 connectors, which are quite tricky. There's a special tool you can get to do it because otherwise if you do it, it kind of snap. Uh, I don't really want to disconnect it from the Wagyu clips there because all of these are connected in series. So I just want to, uh, sorry, in parallel. So I just want to uh, just disconnect them one at a time. But as I said, without the right tool, these things are quite easy to snap. There we go. That's good enough, good. Right, so this is all now redundant. But these two fittings here, I can use. Excellent, that's what I need. Right, it's starting to move solar panels. Right, in terms here. of the polarity, these MC4s only go in one way, male into female. And same again at the bottom. There we go, that solar panels. Actually, it's putting in quite a, quite a chunk. 159 watts, 160 watts. Yeah, showing that it's going to recharge in about six and a half hours. Which, in the afternoon sunlight in Britain, you take that all day long. Now, being from Anchor, obviously, you'd expect the quality to be really, really good, and it is. The display's really kind of intuitive, and when it's charging, it shows you exactly what's going on there, and obviously when it's, um, when it's outputting energy, it shows you how much is reduced and how much is left. It's got the light there, which actually, to be honest, is quite useful, the amount of times that you need uh, to be able to see what you're doing here, plugging stuff in. The, I've used similar ones like this before and sometimes had to use the illumination from the screen to work out what's going on so to have that it's a nice feature um also on the wheels there it's really kind of uh it's a really rugged bit of kit it's not really designed to be moved around like all the time so having the wheels on it um means that when you do move it it is really easy uh and as i said the construction of it is absolutely first class so you do feel like you can use it in a properly off-grid location because it's uh yeah that's a rugged design in terms of the battery uh it's got 3000 cycles so it's going to last you about 10 years if you drain it pretty much every day which you're not going to because it holds 2000 watt hours um and it charges within just over the hour so i mean if you can plug it into uh mains which obviously i can't hear on board but if you can then that thing will last you for a couple of days after an hour's charge. Fantastic. I'm charging a whole bunch of stuff at the moment. I've also got a extension lead coming out here, going to the galley where I'm using the multi-tool. Um, so I've got this phone charging, got my work light and DeWalt batteries. So yeah, I've got 150 watts going in, 47 coming out. But you can put a thousand watts of solar into this. That's massive. Check out Anchor online. At the moment, they've got 500 quid off. There's an additional 400 pounds off this one. So click in the link in the description below this video. And Anchor, if you go to their website, you'll see there's, they have got so many products. They just do so much stuff. Uh, I've known them do like speakers and Bluetooth speakers and other things like that and electronics. They are like really good in their field or all that stuff. So, and this looks like it's on par. So have a look at their website. But yeah, if you buy it quickly, I think Anchor might send you a little gift from their range and 
a little gift from their range is going to be pretty good, let me tell you. Anyway, let's crack on. The weather looks so good for the next few weeks, so I'm going to be getting loads of solar. But whilst I'm out here, I thought I'd check in on our little test from a couple of weeks ago now. So this is it, the old myth of using quality black bitumen straight onto steel and straight into the canal and it goes off. Obviously that was a bit that was out of the water. That's been in the water now for the best part of three weeks, I would say. You know what? I think that kind of has worked. It's definitely taken. Yeah, there's a little bit of residue there, but that's gone off. <laughs> The myth is true. You saw it for yourselves. Right, and on the subject of power, these are the Leisure Bank batteries which came with the boat. They are five fully working lead acid batteries. Um, and yeah, they're fine, they're, they all work. But I'm not gonna be going for lead acid on this. I'm not gonna be going for AGMs either. I'm gonna be going for lithiums and over here in the engine bay is where batteries would be uh, stowed away. And you'll see there, I kind of got these casings for three batteries. The problem with lithiums is that they are all of a varying size. So these ones are for traditional kind of lead acid batteries, which fit in those spaces. Actually, those ones are kind of that's the typical size one so i think that's a 13 inch and that looks a bit more generous and as does that one there so um yeah but traditionally that's where they would go and that's because when lead acid batteries discharge their power they emit uh, a gas i think it's hydrogen but i might be wrong with that but they emit some kind of gas which is why you have them outside lithiums is not the same lithiums can be put inside so but i said they all take up different sizes and stuff so i'm kind of thinking lithiums would live inside here so when i was up at crick over the weekend i had lots of conversations about lithium with all the kind of the main battery companies that were there there's a lot of experience and expertise there uh, there's also quite a lot of conflicting stories so uh, and some of the boaters i speak to there are a bit of conflicting stories about it all so uh, it's not quite a dark art but it's not far from there so i'm kind of looking forward to kind of understanding more about it i'm being approached by a few companies at the moment who are offering me lithium solutions for this boat so i'd be a fool not to go for it the main difference between lithium and uh, lead acid batteries those of you who don't know is that with the old school kind of lead acid you can only use 50 percent of the capacity of the of the battery so on a power audit you basically have to double up so uh, to account for the fact you can use half of it with lithium that's not the case you can use 100 percent of all the power um, and they've got a decent life cycle. So decent lithium batteries will have a life cycle of well, 3000 cycles. That's about 10 years. Uh, and they say lead acid batteries or you know, a good set of them will last you three or four years. So, um, you know, there's, they're like everything on narrowboats and you know, there's loads of variables to consider. But I think the way I'm gonna be going on this is max out on solar and max out on lithium. Yeah, it's fine, that's fine. Okay. Right, okay. Well, on the way up to Crick, there were so many people, and at Crick, there were so many people kind of offering me their kind of good wishes and everything and support for Project 58. I've got to say, with all the people that came up to me at Crick, I really, really did appreciate it. It was so nice. It was kind of, yeah, to feel the love for this boat uh, and for kind of the work I'm doing on it was uh, was excellent. So thank you so, so much. There were loads of people, uh, and I said, so um, Florrie is now going to go and put some names on the on the water tank. Bless you, my love, uh, because she's brilliant at it. Oh, <laughs> AKA Max. Okay. Ooh, I kind of messed up on AKA. That's okay. Uh, and then Neil Sherwood. But it's okay. Oh, that's all right. That's nice. Yeah. 
That looks fun. Uh, right, next one is... Nice and slow, that's it. Good boy. Perfect, right, Arthur's taking off some bits off the lower walls and Flory is updating the buy me a coffee water tank. Next one, Flo, is... Right, the twins are sorting out in the lounge. I'm around the back here trying to get kind of this area sorted out now. I need to make a workbench and kind of get all my tools and everything kind of straight and narrow because this is it. It's all about building the inside now. I've still got to rip out a few bits. There's that bulkhead, the kitchen bulkhead. The galley's all going to go. I think I'm going to kind of retain certain bits of it, but I think most of it's going to go. Um, and then I've got the blank slate. Uh, I've got obviously loads of ideas from Crick, so I'm kind of starting putting pen to paper on that. Um, and actually, thanks to Joe, um, I've got some narrowboat layout plans. So I've got them on slow patrol, so I'm going to start putting, putting some ideas down for there. But really, uh, apart from building the inside, the other thing I've got to do is admin. So I've got my BSS I've got to get done before being put back in the drink. I've paid my bill now at PNS, so... I'm free to go um, and uh, yeah that included the last crane to get put back in so uh, yeah BSS has got to be done then I've got to get it licensed and then I'm going to get it insured uh, and then I'm free to get put in I said I need to just in terms of BSS it'll be fine I've just got to get the starter battery all connected there's not many other systems on board for them to really have a look at but I've got to get it done anyway um, and then yeah I said free to go and then uh, the other thing I've got to do in terms of admin before that is the name. This boat does have a name, but it's two owners old. So it did mean something to someone a long time ago, but it, you know, and it's a nice name, but it doesn't really mean anything to me. So I've been kind of racking my brains about it. I do have an idea for a name. Uh, I was trying to come down, go down the line of something to do with uh, basically the, the, the first initials of my five kids uh, spells the word mafia. So I was trying to come up with something around that. Um, and Ivy, the youngest, basically had to be Ivy or Ian. Um, but the, it was all a bit of a negative kind of uh, connotation to do with Mafia. I was looking, because this was going to be a little hideaway for them. But anyway, yeah, I couldn't really come up with anything particularly positive on it. So, uh, But you are a very creative bunch. So if any of you do come up with a, a gem, then please uh, tap it in the comments below and I'll see it. But other than that, I said I do have a name, so I've got to get that done for the BSS and the insurance and all of that. Uh, and then other than that, it's just kind of making it half decent for Martin and I to do our two or three day cruise up to Burko. There's no services on board whatsoever. So it's not going to be luxury. Uh, it's going to be kind of camping. But I'm hoping the navigation of it will be good fun. Uh, because, you know, unlike Slow Patrol, which I know I dissed a little bit going up and back to Crick and stuff. Uh, but, you know, I love the old girl, but she is she, it's like driving a vintage car. Uh, it's a little bit... You know, after nine hours, you know, your body's kind of saying, mm, let's pull over now. So, uh, but I'm hoping with the Vetus and, you know, a modern boat and everything, yeah, that's not going to be the case. So I'm looking forward to, to cruising this. I really am. That's going to be excellent fun. So I've got to get in touch with Marlon and arrange all of that. Yeah, so tidy up, but no systems on board uh, apart from a bit of power, thanks to Anchor. But yeah, we'll have fun. Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye.